I started guiding here out of necessity. So summertime, most of the places you have to hike in, which is limiting for some people. The Davidson's, you know, very accessible. And I just was fishing it because I had to. I would read all the things about the Davidson and it got in my head for several years, you know, how tricky it was to fish. And, you know, over the years, I've learned a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And, you know, now I bring beginners here all summer long. When I first moved to Wyoming, I bought my boat. I got like a five gallon bag of sunflower seeds. Mm -hmm. Left them in my boat in my driveway and a black bear crawled in that first night and just shredded it. What? And I had, they went up under the false floor, all those sunflower seeds, uh -huh. for years. When you'd get water on the boat, like sunflower seeds would come washing out from under the false <laughs> floor. You couldn't get them all out. What makes trout so cool is that they eat so many different types of bugs. And because this river has all those things, all those different types of bugs, it makes this kind of the perfect place to fish. I mean, you get to see the trout eating all the diverse food groups that people love them for all in one body of water. <laughs> He's a big boy. So they build these little houses that they live in until they're ready to hatch out. That's the bracket cinch. They build them out of sticks and leaves. These are, I don't know exactly what kind they are, but they're these little tan caddis that build theirs out of these pebbles. They're like hermit crabs, they build theirs. Oh, that guy's yeah. tiny. Look, can you see how small that one is? So, you know, the fish species, we've got stocked browns, stocked rainbows, stocked brook trout, wild rainbows, wild browns. And all those different fish sit in different types of water. They eat different types of flies. It makes every pool, you know, a new game. This river seems sometimes to just change day to day. You know, I think that has to deal with pressure because it is a famous river. But sometimes so, there's no pressure out here at all. I mean, the Davidson as a whole is probably your typical mountain stream. I mean, you've got areas with lots of fall and fast runs and pocket water and then the long slicks with deep water and nice holding area for big fish. I think you get the full Western North Carolina experience on the Davidson. When I moved here, there actually, the fishing industry was very small. There were not a lot of you know, open full-time jobs for guides at that point was looking to be outside and so I uh, started guiding. I did work for, you know, anybody that would call other flashlights, but mostly, you know, just started building my own thing. And it's been cool because the fishing industry here has really blown up since I've been here. I mean, now lots and lots of fly shops and guide services have tons of full-time positions and it's very different than it was. I've kind of seen it grow from 2010. I think the biggest thing I take away from it is how much I love to do it. You know, I, I love fly fishing, man. You know, and I love to teach people how to fly fish. And so if I'm gonna be out here anyway, may as well have some new friends with me. And that's the great thing about guiding is I meet so many cool, interesting people that by the end of the day, you know, I've gotten hugs from people that I just met four hours ago. They had the best day of their life. And that's what keeps me coming back. It's like all these smiles, you know, and high fives and like firsts. I mean, you can't spend all day with somebody doing something as unique as fly fishing without, you know, building a strong connection to them. So it's like you're catching up with an old friend, even if you've only fished with them, you know, a handful of times before. To pass on that knowledge that I've worked so hard for also came from somebody else helping me. So why not help somebody else that's interested, right? Because I remember how stoked I was when I got my first fish or my first big fish, you know, and I see people do that and it's like still there. I'm, I might be happier than they are. We can't guarantee you fish. 
you know, we're not going to go if we don't think we're going to catch fish. And we almost always do. You know, oftentimes we catch a lot of fish. Sometimes we catch big fish. I mean, you know, but that's not what we're really selling. We're selling, you know, a cool experience in a beautiful place with friendly people. And if we're doing our job right, we have to teach you. Or if we're going to catch fish, we have to teach you some stuff. You know, and, and we're going to do it in a way we're not going to beat you down. You're going to come in. We know you don't know anything or know very little, and we'll coach you up. It's easy to get caught up in trying to catch as many fish as you can, but you've got to enjoy just being outside and you know learning the sport. It's one of those sports you build on from the time you start till the time you finish. Especially taking kids out, like those are, they're going to get older and they're going to be the ones taking care of these fisheries. So we've got to get them fishing to understand why it's so important. Something about it is magical, man. I, I think it's just so lush and green. And it's just one of those places like you just keep coming back to. The Blue Ridge, the Appalachians, man, they're just, they're a special place.